You know, Avatar is pretty cool, but as we've seen in the past, it doesn't exactly translate the best to live action. Granted, that had a lot to do with this man right here, but hey, an L is an L, right? That's why when Netflix announced their live action series, there was a part of me that was excited, and another part of me that thought we were going to be subjected to this again. That child is being arrested. For what? He was bending tiny stones at us from behind a tree. It really hurt. And now that the show is finally out, we can see if it's any good. God, I hope it's good. So we start off with this pretty cool fight scene that introduces us to how bending feels in this world, and it looks pretty cool. Anyway, this earthbender gets murked and sent to Fire Lord Oza. I mean, Sozin. Huh. Yep, that's right, this is the past. I guess this show's gonna do things a little differently. I mean, showing us more of the story is pretty cool, I guess, but what really separates this adaptation from the original? Oh. And then we get a fun little pseudo remake of the opening from the cartoon, which is cool, but doesn't the bending feel kinda off here? It just feels too slow, like this earth bending seems like it should be a lot more explosive. Eh, I guess I'll just watch the whole show at 1.5 speed. One. So then we get to see Aang, who's just kind of floating around, which is on brand for his character, but it poses a question. Doesn't Aang use his powers to bend the air around his glider and that's why he can fly? Like if this show is saying he can just fly around like Superman, what's the point of having a glider at all? Eh, whatever, this is above my pay grade anyway. After CG Aang gets done showboating, he talks to Gyatso and they share some fun on-screen chemistry. <laughs> Can't wait to see more of that. Gyatso goes off to talk to some of the other airbending masters, and upon arriving is given some bad news. Fire Lord Sozin is planning to attack the Earth Kingdom. The Water Tribes are already sending the warriors to aid the Earthbenders, and we need to help them as well. And we need the Avatar. Aang must leave immediately to begin training in the other bending disciplines. And we can only hope that it is not too late for him to make a difference. Gyatso pleads with them to reconsider sending Aang away, but it's already in motion. Well, put it out of motion! He gives Aang the bad news, and Aang is overwhelmed, so he decides to take a little vacation. I mean, good on you, Aang. You need a minute to collect your thoughts. I get it, I get it. We'll probably only need a day or two. What's the worst that could happen? Then the show takes us here and hey, this looks familiar. Whoa, actually try a lot familiar. Can I just say, the set design and costume design in the show is phenomenal. I was geeking the whole time I was watching. I mean, I was yelling at my friend like a madman. I probably looked like this. Now it's time for the fishing trip we all know and love. But I won't bore you with the details, let's introduce the man of the hour. Holy shit, that was fucking cool. And we get to see Zuko, and he says the thing! Finally. Sokka and Katara take Aang back to the village where they really get down to business and try to figure out who this kid is. He looks dead. What's that mark on his head? Grand Grand says he's an airbender, which is wild because they're all supposed to be dead. But hey, doesn't faze me because I've seen weirder things. Aang finally wakes up and starts going ballistic, asking everyone where the heck his Sky Bison is, and Sokka is more confused than ever. Sky Bison. Sky Bison. Repeating it doesn't help. Well, I guess we'll have to go send a search party out so we can find him. Aang goes on to tell everyone how he got in the ice, which triggers Grand Grand to spill some fan service. Katara consoles him and they go hang out in the abandoned Fire Nation ship, which is cool to know that even kids in other universes like to explore abandoned places when they need a break from the stresses of life. Oh wait, what's that? The Fire Nation's here and everyone's scared. Except for Sokka, who's just pissed off. I knew he was hiding something. When the world needed the Avatar the most, he vanished. Because he's a coward. He ran, and people died. Zuko tells everyone that he's looking for someone very important. All he needs is for them to hand him over, and he'll go away. If not, he about to light this place up. <laughs> then we get to see a slightly more epic Sokka vs Zuko fight, which is followed by some sick bending from Aang and Zuko. I mean, come on. This is so refreshing to see after being subjected to this mess. Anyway, the dust settles and Aang hands himself over in order to avoid more conflict. I think you're the bravest person I've ever met. Really, Aang? The bravest? I mean, don't get me wrong, it was certainly a noble act, but isn't there someone, 
anyone else you know that would be a better fit for that description? Anyone at all? I got time. On the boat, Aang talks to Iroh, which isn't something we get to see in the cartoon this early on, so I'm not really mad about it. It's always cool to see these two interacting given where Iroh truly stands in the war and with the world as a whole. Meanwhile, Sokka and Katara learn how to fly Appa. <laughs> and they pick up our boy Aang, which makes Zuko really upset. Sokka and Katara say they can't go back, so Aang's like, yo, that's fine, let's go to my place. Bad idea. Ah, but Aang's been through a lot already. I'm sure he can work through this pain. Uh oh. Bro, this scene is so much crazier in this version of the show. In the cartoon, it was more of an open field, which was still intense, but Aang straight up starts destroying this temple. It's metal as fuck. Although slightly less metal with Aang's face looking like Play-Doh. Oh my goodness! After Aang finally calms down, he gives us a monologue. He's come to terms with what's happened, but he's not gonna settle for the state of the world. That's right, shit's about to get real. I don't know where this will all lead, and I don't know if I have what it takes. But the one thing I do know is, I'm the Avatar, and this is just the beginning. So yeah, this show's pretty good. I appreciate that it's taken some liberties with its direction. Sure, it feels different, but it feels different in a way that's refreshing. Do I think it needs to exist though? I mean, no, because in my opinion, the story's already been told in a beautiful way. But I will say this though, I really enjoyed getting to see things that weren't shown to us in the cartoon. Seeing the brutal extermination of the airbenders was crazy to witness and honestly gives me something more specific to imagine when I'm rewatching the original series. I'm curious what you all think about the show so far. Do you love it? Hate it? Eh, maybe you're just glad that they got the names right this time around. Whatever the case, thanks for watching my video. Now I'll hand the mic over to my friend Monkey Atso, who had some last words he wanted to get off his chest. Oh!